semiconductor doping is the process of intentionally adding a small percentage of foreign atoms to extremely pure intrinsic semiconductors to change their electrical properties. Even a tiny percentage doping in single crystal semiconductors makes dramatic effects. Doping is used to increase either the electron or the hole concentration. The common dopants for silicon are listed in this table. To increase the electron concentration, you can add column 5 elements such as phosphorus, arsenic, or antimony atoms to the silicon crystal. These dopants are called donors since they are adding more electrons. Phosphorus is most commonly used. To increase the hole concentration, you can add column 3 elements such as boron, gallium, indium, or aluminum atoms to the silicon crystal. They are called acceptors because they increase holes in the crystal. Boron is the most commonly used. First, let's use the bonding model to explain how doping works. In the donor doping case, column 5 elements have 5 valence electrons. When a column 5 element such as phosphorus is substituted for a silicon atom in the semiconductor lattice, 4 of its 5 valence electrons fit perfectly into the bonding structure. However, the 5th electron is extra and doesn't fit into the structure and is only weakly bound to the phosphorus atom. Since its bond is very weak, at room temperature, this fifth electron gains enough thermal energy and escapes from this weak bond. Then it can move freely within the lattice, thus becomes a carrier. This donor doping only increases the electron concentration, not the whole concentration. When the dopant atom loses one electron, it becomes a positive ion and is locked in place by the four covalent bonds. So the release of the fifth electron doesn't break any atom-to-atom -atom bonds, thus doesn't produce holes. We use column 3 elements as the dopants in acceptor doping. Column 3 elements such as a boron have only 3 valence electrons. When a boron atom is substituted for a silicon atom in the crystal, it can only complete 3 covalent bonds with its 4 neighbors, thus leaves one hole, i.e. a missing bond in the crystal. As we have explained in previous videos, other nearby electrons can be attracted into this hole and leave behind another missing bond in its original place. Thus, this empty hole can be treated as if it can move freely on its own. In the acceptor doping process, only the hole concentration is increased. The electron concentration is not affected at all. The bonding model in the last slide helps us realize the spatial relationship. However, it does not quantitatively tell us exactly how much energy is involved. Instead, we need to use the energy band model. In donor doping, we said the extra fifth electron is weakly bound around the phosphorus atom and can easily escape at room temperature. However, we need to know exactly the binding energy for this weak bond. The positively charged donor core plus the fifth electron can be thought as similar to a hydrogen atom per Bohr's model. However, in a hydrogen atom, the electron moves in a vacuum. In our case, the fifth electron moves through silicon atoms. Thus, we need to use its effective mass instead of electron's rest mass m0. Also, we need to use the permittivity of silicon rather than of free space. Then, based on this formula for binding energy of a hydrogen electron, we can calculate the binding energy of the fifth electron. And it turns out to be minus 0.1 electron volt. Here, we need to pause and think clearly. If the energy absorbed by the electron is exactly the binding energy, the released electron will have the lowest conduction band energy EC as shown in the picture. So that means this fifth electron was at an energy level just EB absolute value below the EC conduction band level as shown by the dashed line. Let's remember that the normal band gap for our silicon is 1.12 electron volt. So normal silicon valence electron must gain at least 1.12 electron volt to become a conduction band, thus becomes a carrier. But when we dope it with donor atoms, a higher energy level called the donor level ED is added to the energy band model, which is occupied by the donor's fifth valence electron. It needs much less, in fact only 0.05 electron volt to be excited into the conduction band and becomes a carrier. Here ED equals EC minus the absolute value of EB. EB is the fifth electron's binding energy, as we calculated in the last slide. So the donor doping can increase the semiconductor's electrical conductivity significantly at room temperature. As shown by the right side picture, doping with acceptor atoms at allowed electronic levels into the normal forbidden gap. This acceptor level is just slightly above the normal valence band. 
There are many empty energy states at this acceptor level and can readily accept electrons excited from the valence band. At room temperature, normal silicon valent band electrons gain enough thermal energy and jump into the acceptor level easily, thus create holes at the valence band, which are carriers. This picture shows energy band dynamics at different temperatures. The top part A shows donor doping energy band model. The bottom B shows acceptor doping energy band model. At absolutely zero temperature, there are no thermal energies available, so the donor electrons all stay at the donor level, and there are no electrons at acceptor level. With increased temperature, more and more electrons at the donor level, which are the fifth electron of the donor, gain thermal energy and jump into the conduction band. Also, more and more silicon valence band electrons jump into the acceptor level. At room temperature, all donor fifth electrons get excited to the conduction band, thus becomes carriers. In acceptor doping, all acceptor level energy states are filled with excited silicon valence electrons, thus many holes are generated at the valence band, which are also carriers. Thank you for viewing this video. If you find it useful, please don't forget to subscribe below. Thank you.